That's very kind. Thank you very much. I'm offended by some things. I'm offended by chewing gum. I'm offended by backwards pointing baseball hats. <laughs> but I don't try to get a version of the blasphemy law passed to prevent people chewing gum or reversing their cap. So what if I'm offended? So what if my feelings are hurt? Does that give me the right to prevent others from expressing their opinions? However, is there a time when it is right to be offended? I think so, yes. We should be offended when children are denied a proper education. <laughs> we should be offended when children are told they will spend eternity in hell. We should be offended when medical science, for example, stem cell research, is compromised by... <laughs> compromised, I should say, by the bigoted opinions of powerful and, above all, well-financed ignoramuses. <laughs> we should be offended when voodoo of all kinds is given equal weight to science. We should be offended by hymen reconstruction surgery. We should be offended by female circumcision, euphemism for <laughs> genital mutilation. This, this picture was taken in Africa, but it happens in Britain. I had a, a long conversation with a school's inspector from London, and she told me it's common. Girls are typically sent away to stay with an uncle in Bradford. We should be offended by stoning. This young Kurdish woman was stoned to death in a so-called honor killing because she wanted to marry a young man of the wrong religion. I mentioned the novelist Kingsley Amis a moment ago. His son, Martin Amis, is an equally distinguished novelist. And he made a very important point. Secularism contains no warrant for action. One can afford to be crude about this. When Islamists crash passenger planes into, into buildings or hack off the heads of hostages, they shout, God is great. When secularists do that kind of thing, what do they shout? A critic of Martin Amis's book remarked upon, on this. That question is meant to be rhetorical, but there's a simple answer. They shout, secularists shout, Heil Hitler. What a truly outrageous thing to say. Whether or not Hitler was a Roman Catholic, the evidence is contradictory, he often said he was, nobody could deny that Hitler's soldiers were as Christian as everybody else was in Europe at the time, and that means that most of them were, mostly either Roman Catholic or Lutheran. But even if Hitler was an atheist, so what? Hitler was also a vegetarian. Does that suggest that vegetarians have a special tendency to be murderous, bigoted racists? The point is that there is a logical pathway leading from religion to the committing of atrocities. It's perfectly logical. If you believe that your religion is the right one, you believe that your God is the only God, and you believe that your God has ordered you through a priest or through a holy book, to kill somebody, to blow somebody up, to fly a plane into a skyscraper, then you are doing a righteous act. You're a good person. You're following your religious morality. There is no such logical pathway leading from atheism or secularism to any such atrocious act. It just doesn't follow.